Hi everyone, it's Alex, and today I'm here to talk about Duck's Newberry Port by Lucy Ellman. And this certainly is um, that book that is the 1,000 page behemoth um, about an Ohio woman that likes to bake pies. Although simultaneously going on, we do have this story about a mountain lion and how it sort of plays into the fact of what's going on in this story. Although if I could sum up this book um, kind of in its entirety, I would say it's definitely a book about fear um, and how we sort of navigate fear um, and characterize violence, specifically in the United States um, within our current time. So sort of a way of giving us context is this Ohio woman that continues um, this long sort of um, spiel about giving us these sort of facts about what can sort of sustain us and helping us understand um, an American lifestyle, particularly involving a lot of grim and not very cheery topics or subject matter as she goes on to talk about things like gun violence and murders that happen across the state's history. Although over time we definitely get the sense that the intensity of these events that are pretty horrific that she tells us about um, to me sort of devolve in intensity because we get this sort of blur or blend of all of these pop culture references, particularly about um, sort of our own mirror as people wanting to be entertained by things like true crime um, as of late within the past recent years, and also um, spewing some tweets by um, the United States current president, Donald Trump. So between all of this, I certainly think with all of these references, um, there's this spectrum of really determining my own sort of social responsibility as a reader with how I react to all of these references that I understand, whether or not they be uh, ones I enjoy um, or ones I try to stray away from. Um, and I certainly think Elman, in doing that, really creates this sense of emphasizing or actually encouraging distraction, which is actually one thing I feel like an author wouldn't want you to do with their work. I think that Elman deliberately spaces her references as a way to really let the reader pause and digest uh, these references being introduced. And that's why I think actually the separation between this mountain lion story and then our Ohio narrator story um, is so important because of the concept of re-engaging with our narrator every time. I feel like much like um, when you try to get to know somebody or become friends with someone, um, there's a sense of proximity where if you just keep uh, hanging out with them multiple times, you just get to know them better. And that's certainly what it feels like every time uh, this narrator begins her new um, long-winded um, accounts for multiple facts that she's telling us. But then um, slowly but surely, we actually get more specific personal insight about our narrator's life um, and sort of what she thinks about her own effect and how she shapes the lives around her. What really stood out to me as a really important memory um, among many others is that our narrator is really bogged down by this memory she has about her mother, um, who she loves very much. And whenever her mother was younger, she saw these ducks in a pond and she was really excited and wanted to go play with them, although it really almost caused her to drown. And then her mother's older sister saved her, um, I believe even though her sister was afraid of water. So just knowing that how joy and fear can clash um, so unexpectedly um, and so close within each other, I think is really sort of the thesis of this book um, and what it's really trying to say. And in terms of what it's really trying to say, I think from a reader's standpoint, I think for me, um, it really made me, Duck's Newberry Point really made me think about how I re read and reevaluate sort of what I want out of a book. Um, shamefully speaking, I kind of even wondered, um, as I was getting more personal insight to our narr narrator, um, sort of wondering again, how can it, you know, gravitate back to me? How can I make it more about me with these references I understand? Because I feel like so many of the books I read, or what I feel like readers are expected to do sometimes, is to think at the end of the book um, how it really changed me, even if it's supposed to. Although cycling back to that idea of proximity and getting to know someone better, um, I wonder whether or not this sort of bombardment of references is a way for me to uh, realize um, if I take an inventory of just the things I understood as a reference um, that were facts, whether or not um, I can accumulate so many references that I knew 
and whether or not that makes it easier for me to empathize with our narrator based on sort of the grim topics she's talking to us about um, with her personal life. Although with that selectivity I mentioned about Elman encouraging us to be distracted and maybe just only think about certain moments that really stick out to us, there are some things I know about our narrator that I remember. I know that she loves um, Pride and Prejudice and Jane Austen, although I think her favorite novel is Persuasion. I know that she loves Laura Ingalls Wilder, although she's really stuck on the idea of what it means that Laura Ingalls Wilder endured such a harsh or hard winter. I know that she loves Meryl Streep and Alec Baldwin, and she loves mentioning Meryl Streep in Bridges of Madison County, which is a movie I also love. So for me personally, I like to remember the parts where our narrator is uh, somewhat, you could say even accidentally, um, opening herself up uh, just by making these uh, repetitive gestures towards things that she likes. Even though I do feel like this book is heavily involved with fear and sort of a lack of hope, um, I think because of that lack of hope, it does open yourself up to reminding yourself of the little things that really make you glad that you're alive. And thinking of the structure of this book again, how there's such an omission of punctuation, I think it really um, allows the reader to determine our narrator's sort of subjective voice um, amid all of this text and how uh, maybe Lucy Ellman is trying to say that in other channels of text like through social media how we interpret um, things or what people consider facts simply by posting online um, how that might affect things for the sake of posterity, but also what the intentions behind the words are other than the words themselves. And thinking of why Ohio of all places for our narrator, um, I do think there is really something like unsuspecting and absolutely something completely American about Ohio. Um, I think even, I honestly don't even remember if there's a specific location dedicated to our, where our narrator is from in Ohio, but I get the gist that she's from Southern Ohio, um, which is literally like right across the street from me from where I live in West Virginia. And there's also references about West Virginia. And I can truly say um, that with this um, sort of area in the middle or like a blend between West Virginia and Ohio and even parts of Kentucky, um, this is a part of the country that is largely dismissed. Um, our narrator even says that she doesn't feel any attachment to Ohio. Um, and the way she describes Ohioans is really interesting because there's this quote about how she might deliver a pie to someone and she acts all happy and everyone's so happy, um, although she sort of feels bad or guilty about her happiness, mainly because this area where I'm from, uh, between this tri-state area, is burdened by um, some really... Uh, horrible things beyond our control. Something like, that's the thing about Ohioans, you never know how they're really feeling. And uh, because of that statement, I think it really matches up again with sort of towards the end of this novel, um, there is some sort of narrative justice or narrative reward um, with how Lucy Ellman sort of brings up again this sense of violence um, and how it might occur or bubble up in somebody. And while our narrator finds herself in a unique situation related to violence towards the end of the book, um, I think the main obstacle that Lucy Ellman is trying to make clear to us is that the narrator is trying so hard to resist being a part of this narrative um, of violence that she gets swept up into to where hopefully she doesn't disappear um, into that narrative to where all these things that we realize about her, about what she considers important facts about the world, don't get lost um, or forgotten about. So is Duck's Newberry Port um, a sprawling epic? The answer is no. Do I think it's like a literary revolution? No. Um, I, it's really just like a simple book. I think it really tries to reject all of your expectations of what a novel is supposed to do. And in some ways, um, I'm really excited, um, for example, this being a part of the sh short list for the Booker Prize this year, how a lot of readers will be introduced to a book like this. I think if you read it, it will challenge you, um, not necessarily like intellectually, like from a serious reader standpoint, because of the prose, I think is actually really quite simple and easy to read. Um, it's just a matter of your endurance and your commitment. Um, exactly to um, how often you want to read this book. Um, I don't ever feel like there was a sense of urgency necessarily with reading this book, but it was certainly um, an interesting and compelling and captivating um, idea that I was excited um, to jump back into. Overall, I think this book really begs the question, um, what happens to our narrator first? Um, an extension, what happens to us first? 
Is it really the world that influences our selective memories that we choose to remember? Or is it our memories, like our narrator remembering about her mother and the ducks and her sister, that really uh, compass or navigate um, the rest of our lives? And to an extent, how those memories sort of impact our perception of the world especially. If you've read this book, um, I would absolutely love to know what you think. I know that there are a couple of reviews that I really enjoyed by Eric Carl Anderson and Matthew Sharapa, so I'll link those down below. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.